Hi, kid, and welcome to this extraordinary true life kid time story time. Oh, Helen Keller. Oh, I just love this story. Oh, do you, Olivia the Ostrich? How come? Oh, well, I is played Helen Keller in a Westchester Broadway production of The Miracle Worker, where I got to learn sign language. No kidding, you learned American Sign Language? No, I learned Ostrich Sign Language because, as you know, I am the diva of Ostrich Theatre and I am nothing if not innovative, not unlike Helen Keller. Oh, oh well, she is quite innovative. Helen Keller is the most extraordinary person, but you know what? Let's just dive into the story because she just, it's, it's so incredible. It's just so incredible that I just, I want you to take it all in because this is a story of somebody who overcame every single obstacle to do things that were so extraordinary that it has to just basically inspire you to go off and do anything in your imagination. Here we go. Oh, and as you can see, I picked this book up at the Los Angeles Library. Helen Keller could not see. She could not hear. She could hardly speak, but she learned to read and write. She loved to swim and ride bikes. Helen traveled all over the world. She met 12 U.S. presidents. Wow, that's a lot of presidents. She spent her life helping others. How did she do it? Let's find out. Can you imagine learning to speak and write when you can't see or hear? Let's find out how she did this. Helen had been born healthy, but at six months, the happy baby could even say a few words. But then, when she was not yet two, she got very sick with a high fever. Baby Helen recovered at last, but then her parents realized she could no longer see or hear. Helen's world had become dark and silent. Little Helen could no longer speak. And because she couldn't hear, she forgot all her words. And, and she got super frustrated. Right? I totally understand why. She, she, she started to scream and kick and hit. And many po people told her parents that Helen would never learn and she should be sent away. But Helen's parents refused. Because back then, back then, when a child was like this and you couldn't, you couldn't help her and she had this, this disability that they didn't know how to handle, they would just send them away because they didn't know what to do with them. But the parents said no. Helen's parents wrote to a school for blind people to ask for help. The school sent a young woman to their house to teach Helen. Her name was Annie Sullivan. And here's where everything changes. Helen was nearly seven years old by now. Annie was only 20. She came from a poor family and she had pretty bad eyesight herself, which I guess gave her a lot of perspective in teaching kids who were blind. Now, Helen's family had always let Helen have her own way, but Annie, oh, 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 do you see this? Standoff is happening right there. Annie did not let Helen have her own way. Annie was kind to Helen, but firm. Annie made Helen eat with a spoon and not with her fingers. Helen threw her spoon on the floor and also apparently her cup and everything. And Annie, what did she do? She made her pick it up. Helen shrieked and fought. Annie remained firm. Her parents were there looking super worried. Now, Annie tried to teach Helen to understand words and language. Annie handed Helen a doll. With her fingers, Annie spelled doll in Helen's open hand. Helen, though, didn't understand, but Annie kept on trying. And then one day, it worked. Annie pumped water over Helen's hand. Annie spelled out water, and in that moment, in a flash, Helen understood. Sign language, she was teaching her sign language and what things meant. It took her, obviously, several tries to understand and put it all together. So this is where things start getting really interesting. Helen realized that Annie's finger spelled words that named things. She zoomed from object to object. That day she learned father, mother, and sister. Annie was teacher. Now she was like picking it up and you know, cause like she had so much to catch up on now, right? 
Then Helen learned how to read by touching raised dots on a page. Helen was the first blind and deaf person to learn to read. Newspapers started printing stories about Helen and Annie, and the two of them became famous. Have you heard of reading with raised dots on a page? That's called Braille, because a fellow by the last name of Braille invented it. Just like sign language where uh, the hand has you know, uh, uh, you know, letters for, you know, little different movements for your hand for each letter. Braille has different dots and things for each letter too, so that you could read by touching. Helen's world was now a happy place. Helen was a brilliant student. Oh, that mind was so thirsty after all those years in the dark. And Annie was a brilliant teacher. Annie lived at their home for years. And then Helen learned to read lips. Helen got into Radcliffe College and Annie went with her to help her. While still in college, Helen wrote a book about her life. And then after college, she just kept on writing. We are never really happy until we try to brighten the lives of others, Helen said. So what did she do to brighten the lives of others? She helped the poor. She helped children. <coughs> Helen also helped women win the rights to vote. Annie was always at her side. So see, she became a helper. But Annie's eyesight was fading, and Annie's health was fading, and Helen, well, she needed more help. So Helen hired a housekeeper, and her name was Polly Thompson. She learned how to help Helen with reading and with travel and became a very close friend because, as you know, um, Helen, well, maybe you don't know because we're learning about her together, but Helen ended up traveling the world because she was so extraordinary and so inspiring and such a helper to different kinds of people that she would be invited to go all over the world. But, you know, she needed somebody to be her eyes and to help her along. For years, the three of them lived together. Let's see, so it's, so it's Polly and Annie and Helen. But then in 1936, Annie died. She had been Helen's teacher for almost 50 years. What an incredible friendship. That's incredible. Helen missed her friend, but she and Polly kept on working. Helen raised money for the blind. She comforted injured soldiers. See how she's touching his face right there? Because that's how she could see them. She could see them by feeling the contours of the face and by reading lips, she could touch and feel what was being said. It's really extraordinary. Helen loved to smell flowers, to cuddle dogs, to taste good food, to feel music through the vibrations and to touch art. Helen loved life and she changed the way the world viewed deaf and blind people. She inspired deaf and blind people to believe in themselves. She lived a full life with courage and with joy. And here's a cool timeline. This here she is, she's born in Alabama in 1880. Like I told you back then, they didn't really know how exactly to handle somebody in her condition, you know, which she, she couldn't see, she couldn't hear. They couldn't figure out how to, how to help her out and they were just gonna send her away somewhere because they didn't have the know-how that we have now thanks to her and Annie Sullivan. At 19 months of age, Helen gets that high fever where she loses her hearing and her sight. Then here we have the timeline when she uh, meets Annie and learns that objects have names and she learns Braille and she goes to college. She publishes her first story in 1903 at the age of just 23, the story of my life. She would go on to write 12 books, 12 books. And there she goes, she's graduated from college. Oh, look at that, there she is meeting one of the 12 presidents she got to meet. That one is JFK, and she died in 1968 at the age of 87. Oh, and here's the braille I told you about. You know how you can read by touching? By touching the page and feeling the little, like little lumps, little dots on the page. Here it is. And this is, this is what it looks like. If you're blind, this is what you see as the alphabet. See that? It's a whole other way of learning the alphabet. And that's how you spell Helen right there. Um, let's see here. And it says here about the senses, and this is a really interesting fact about all of us, that even though she couldn't see or hear, she had an excellent sense of smell, taste, and touch. Because when you lose one sense, the other ones get sharper, and that's already proven. So sometimes people will even get blindfolded 
to taste something more intensely and see all the flavors because it's like everything else goes into overdrive to work extra hard to pick up sensations because something else is blocked off. Isn't that a fa fascinating thing about how we are built? Um, and here it says reading lips. Helen couldn't hear what people were saying, but she could understand their words and read a person's lips by putting her fingers on their lips and her thumb on their throat. She felt their lips move and their voice vibrate. Isn't that fascinating? And there she is. What does she say here? Oh, I like this quote. Oh, this is really good. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched, but just felt in the heart. That's right. You don't need sight or hearing to feel what's important in the heart. Uh, storyteller, hey, Big Bear. Um, I had a friend tell me that Helen Keller wasn't real. And I said, yes, she is because there's a book about her. But they said that it, she wasn't real because nobody could do that kind of stuff. Oh. What a lack of imagination your friend has. That's just, they have to read more books to see how this is even possible. Yeah, I mean, uh, you have to imagine that people can do incredible things all the time, right? Yes, let me give you an example. Okay, okay. It used to be that nobody believed that a person could run a mile in less than four minutes. It was considered impossible. And, and, and somebody did it? Yep. Somebody did it, and now a whole bunch of people have done it. Is, is there anything else? Uh, sure. Um, can you believe that somebody could swim from United States of America all the way to France in the Atlantic? Whoa, that sounds crazy! But somebody did it in 1998. Whoa! I mean, history is full of examples of people doing extraordinary things. You have to uh, take away all the limits in your mind, you know, of what you can do. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise then you, you never dream big and, and, and try reaching for things that are hard, right? Exactly, that's what I'm always talking about. You have to dream big. And, and as far as having uh, what we call a disability, uh, you know, like, like with Helen not being able to, to see or to, or to hear, you know, she had to overcome incredible odds but she did, and she changed the world for so many people after that. I mean, that's why, that's why so many people can read now and, and write and, and have a full life even with, without those two important senses. Yeah, okay, that's good to know because I felt bad, like, yeah, yeah, she's real. And they were like, no, no, she's not, that's impossible. But hey, people do impossible things like all the time. Uh, before, they used to be like, no YouTube, and then, and then now there's YouTube. And somebody had to dream it, and then somebody probably said, that's impossible. But look, here we are. Here we are. And we're also here at KidTimeStoryTime.com. Visit us anytime. We have tons of fascinating true life stories of people who've done incredible things. Like moved mountains. Like moved mountains. And so many things to let you know that you can also do incredible things. See you next time, kids.